What's going on guys, it's Hi. It's about 8 a.m. and I've just reached my pickup point for today's adventure. There's a lot planned, so stick around. There's gonna be lots of fun. Three hour drive, we finally made it to our first destination for the day, and it is Tamkap. As you can see, this is a port for these rowboats, and that's what we'll be doing for our first activity of the day. One interesting thing, as you can see about this experience, that the people who row these boats actually row with their feet, and that's just <laughs> incredible. Overall, this is a very relaxing experience. You sit and cruise down the river and enjoy the scenery. The only thing that really detracts from the experience is the amount of other boats that's on the river. There's always someone coming at you or someone in front of you. Then once in a while, you get somebody trying to sell you some stuff while you're on the river, or a photographer trying to take pictures of you and to sell you prints of it. Prior to going on the boats, our tour guide explained to us that Tam Kaup, Tam means three, Kaup means caves, so we will be going through three different caves on this boat ride. So this is actually a 40 minute round boat ride. That's supposed for the rower, having the ability to row your feet would really help you endure this entire process. And having somebody like me, who's not the smallest or widest person in the world, it definitely doesn't help. So major props to these people. I think if you're a photographer, it would be extremely beneficial to maybe just rent out a private rowboat for yourself because then you could really get some crazy shots at this environment. So it would seem like this is a in and out type of deal. It's not a loop. So you go through and at the end of the third cave, pretty much immediately after the third cave is the, the end of the, the route. And at the end, there are a bunch of ladies in their own rowboats just having like drinks and food and whatnot that you can buy. And they, they try to push it pretty hard. But you know, if you want it, buy it. If not, just say no a couple of times, a couple of times and they'll probably leave. But right now we're just giving the rowboat operator a little bit of a break before we head back. Again, this is a 40 minute trip, so I mean, that's a lot of rowing.
just finished up that little rowboat tour and now we are scheduled to go have a buffet lunch but one thing that i want to mention is that for these robot tours, you are not expected to give a tip, but that's kind of the world. You're not expected to give a tip. But if you think about it, 40 minutes of rowing, the, for the amount of effort that they had to put in to get these tours, you, me, down this river and back is just incredible. So for that amount of work, I mean, you should really give a tip. And uh, our tour guide said that each person, if you want, you can give 25,000, but we just had to drop 50. But I mean, that's like $2 and a couple cents. So it's not too bad. Interestingly, after just mentioning the, the whole tip thing, because I'm Vietnamese, I can understand what they're saying, these rowboat operators. And it's funny how like you just hear them say like, oh, this person's like, we had to row three people or and it's like, they're not giving enough tip and stuff like that. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to go back on what I just said about what you should tipping, but I mean, with the ungratefulness of it, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's better that you don't understand what they're saying than in this case. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's definitely better that you don't know what the robo operators are saying because as I'm standing here, like it's constantly all they do is talk crap about their their, their, uh, their guests or their, their patrons. So it's kind of funny to me, but again, you should probably tip unless you want them to really talk crap about you. All right, so after that extremely disappointing meal, we are about to go on a bike ride to a local temple. It is a 10 minute ride. It's supposed to be flat ground. So hopefully we don't break too much of a sweat. So if you've been keeping up with my Vietnam vlogs, you know that this would be the second bike ride through Vietnam that I've done. And second time in a row, these bikes suck so hard. Like the seat's super stiff and the handlebars on this one, it, it's tracking a little bit better than the other ones. Like last time, I couldn't re even really keep it going straight. It was like a constant battle. But this one seems to be going straight, but the brakes are super bad. Like it squeaks like crazy. All right, so we're starting our journey. And this time I've come prepared with this camera and hopefully we get some good stable footage unlike last time in Katma. All right, you guys can't see it, but check out my brakes. I'm about to slam on the brakes and listen to them scream. Hear that? That's me. So far the bike ride isn't too bad. 10 minutes long and it's mostly flat ground so far. So although it's hot and I'm breaking a sweat, it's not actually difficult. What a beautiful bike ride. If you have any opportunity to go bike riding in Vietnam, just take it. The tours aren't too expensive and the scenery is just incredible. So it looks like we've just made it to the temple, our first destination for the day. And like I said, it's a 10 minute long ride, but honestly, it really did not feel like that. It feels like, I mean, like we just left our restaurant and it was a super easy bike ride here at least. So this temple actually doesn't allow you to ride your bike inside. So as you can see, the entire tour group has just gotten off the bike and everybody's just pushing their bike into the temple. Right now we are currently at the Din Tin Huang Temple. And fun fact, Hua Lu, which is where we are at right now, is actually the first capital of Vietnam. And it was later changed in 1010 AD to Hanoi. When the capital was changed to Hanoi, this temple was built to commemorate the first king and the first dynasty of Vietnam, the Huang Dynasty. One thing to take note of is that women can't enter the temple with shorts or really anything that shows too much leg. So they have extra dresses that you can borrow and wear while you're at the temple. But men don't have this restriction. You can pretty much wear whatever you want. Another thing to know when actually going inside of the temple is that no hats, no sunglasses, and no photography. You can do all of that outside of the actual temple, but not inside. This is just an absolutely beautiful location. If you have the chance, definitely come here and visit it. The temple itself is fairly small, but the 
actual grounds it's fairly large and very peaceful quiet and it's just a great place to be It looks like we're heading back to our bikes now and I would say that the most disappointing thing about this tour so far, even though we go to these amazing places, we don't really have that much time to actually spend and enjoy the place. Like this temple, we were here for like 10 minutes or something like that, so just really disappointing in terms of that. After a few minute bike ride, we are taking a quick break and <laughs> although you're supposed to be sticking with the group, I couldn't help it. I was like way back there. I was riding by myself, just doing, going through the countryside, saying hi to the locals and oh man, I just love this thing. So we've just made it back to the restaurant that we had the buffet at and it seems like on the bike ride, the second half, the second 30 minute ride is actually a loop. So you go from the temple and you loop around to back to where you pretty much essentially started and for the most part it's a very flat ground drive ride but there is a tiny bit of a grab so if you stop pedaling you'll stop so you constantly have to go but it's really not that bad. I hope you guys are ready because we are at our final destination for the day, our final workout for the day, and that is the Hang Mu. Hang Mu translates to the dancing caves, and that's just where we'll be going after we climb 486 steps. It is just after 4 p.m. right now. We have to meet back up at 5 p.m. So one hour, 486 up, 486 down. Just started and these are not exactly the easiest step. They're a little bit taller than normal. So it's like Stairmaster on steroids. This is, this is not good guys. Second flight of stairs, heart's already beating pretty quick. Hopefully all the hiking that I've done will pay off here. So what makes it more difficult is that these steps are varying in sizes. So some of them are taller than each other and then some are longer. So some of them take like two, three, four steps for you to actually clear. So it's just murder on your thighs. Walking up the higher steps is like pretty much doing straight high knees. One step at a time. Okay, I've just reached a fork in the road, and from here you have two paths. I really hope that I was paying attention correctly and that the right path leads to the dragon, and the left path leads to something else. But the left path looks a lot harder and longer. It would make most sense for that to be the dragon since that's the main attraction of this mountain. Okay, I've just confirmed it. Going left is where the dragon is. Do not go right for the dragon, go left. So what I'm gonna do is just head up left to the dragon, touch it, come back down, then circle up the right path. If you need it, there's actually a little cafe just a little bit up the way from the left path towards the dragon. It's actually quite genius to put a little rest off cafe there because you can only imagine what kind of killing they could make up here. Hike the prices up for all the drinks. People have no other options. Oh, oh man, it's super steep now.
Going past the guys. So we've come to a extremely sketchy portion of the hike, which just happens to be at the very end. And there's a bit of a buildup in terms of the line of everybody trying to get to the dragon. Ooh. We made it. Superstition has it that if you touch the dragon, you get a thousand years of good luck and fortune. And I am a few steps away. And touch. What? An awesome experience. 486 steps. Completely worth it. Just a word of advice if you are trying to make it up to the dragon. The last bit of the hike, the very last couple steps, it's extremely sketchy, very loose rocks and all of that. So wear decent shoes with lateral support. Just be extremely careful because you have a very possible chance of falling off and killing yourself. But it's hard to say that it's not worth it when you look at a view like this. So when I was in Hanoi yeah, at the, the Note Coffee. I actually met, met these two girls there and they're just like traveling the world for like six months already and yeah. one month or so? Yeah. Two months. Yeah. And they're like 19 years old in college, living the dream right now. All right, just made it down from the actual dragon, and again, a warning. Once you make it to that backlog of people, I was literally just like holding on to people as I tried to climb around the mountain, and that is extremely sketchy. And, ooh. However, if you are scared and you don't want to make that super sketchy climb, reaching Wang Am, you pretty much get a 360 view of the entire mountain. I got super serious, rushed down the mountain, like less than seven minutes. The bus is waiting for me. Whew, I'm in trouble. I rushed too hastily because I literally came down to the bottom of the mountain and my entire group is still sitting here waiting, so. <sighs> but I'm proud of myself. Making it all the way up there, making it down. <sighs> Completely worth it. What an adventure today has been. I'm just heading back to the bus now and getting ready to go back to Hanoi. A day trip, three different places, completely worth it. Of the things we've been able to do in Hanoi so far, today has been among one of the more memorable days. And if you have the ability to come here and do the tour as I did, or just come to the various places, totally do it. Totally worth it. Spend the money, spend the time. <sighs> Moments that you remember for the rest of your life. With that, I'm just going to end the vlog here because, like I said, we're just going to head back to Hanoi. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below any thoughts or questions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content, especially more content from Vietnam. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.